Welcome back to the Epicurean and the Herbalist. Welcome back, everyone. Family, Ooh. friends, viewers. Yeah, all the people. All the people. All the people are everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Including South Africa. Oh. <laughs> she going to say hi to y'all every hi. episode. Yes, I okay. am. And you will Me too. always okay. be in my heart. And Girl, I, I don't need to be in your heart. heart. You got to see them. Okay. I'm good. Today's topic, hot topic, we are talking about yeah, mm, serious issues here. Is it? It's not when you think about it, but we're going to talk about trauma dumping. And not how to. Listen, I don't want to say like not how to, but being mindful of it. Because I think people no. do it not intentionally. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, in my later years in life... Mm -hmm. I've been very conscious of where I'm at with my friends, with my family, with, you know, my husband, what even kids, what that looks like if I'm just overwhelmed or not having a good day or mm -hmm. not. It's simple to get in a conversation or on the phone or whomever's closest to you, right? And to transfer energy, right? Mm -hmm. And being responsible. I always say, be responsible for the energy you bring. Okay. That's good. Um, trauma dumping, you could call it up your girlfriend just to talk, right? And you're not intentionally calling to dump but you end up doing that, right? Because you're trying to get, you're trying to release that energy of saying, this went wrong, this is this, or it was not wrong, or whatever those things are, they not, might be in a place to receive that, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm very conscious of now saying to my friend or whomever before I get on the phone, especially with us, because we talk so much all day long, of saying, are you in a space to be able to receive Right, because you may be like, Look, I got a whole lot going on, I'm not, I'm full. Um, I think that it's very important to have those conversations to say, I'm in a receiving space to where I can help you through whatever it is that you're going through, or just to be a listening ear. I might not need anyone to necessarily help me, I just need someone to hear me. Um, but I think we need to be um, conscious of that That's when good. we're entering these conversations whether it be with your kids and you're just in the middle of being overwhelmed and they come and ask you something and i'm like ah! you know and then i'm like you didn't deserve that because you did nothing wrong you were just i was just in that space same with me calling you i you could have called me to just say how your day how's your day and then i tell you how my day was which was not great or overwhelming or whatever and you're like whoa i I, I didn't call you for that. I'm going through my own stuff. I maybe just called to change my energy up, you know? So, um, it's, I don't think trauma dumping is necessarily an intentional thing. It's not, but it's always the, um, aftermath. Mm -hmm. The aftermath is what's so hurting. Um, she made some very good points and the points that you made, I remember when we had, you know, in her younger years, I would say, and my grandbabies are young right now, but in the ages of adolescence mm -hmm. and older as children um, mature you know they have things on their minds and we think of them as just little people and you know just do what you need to do right. you get, you're getting your marching orders and come back with the results mm -hmm. and we get into that habit we feed into it as adults that we have our marching orders and then we come back with results and then we realize that's not the end of the story right it's not the end of the story and then you find out that your group, your close knit group of people that you rely on, your your most favorite five, whoever that may be, your support group that you have, um, you might need them to vent, and that's an okay thing. You've had a tough day. Tough yeah. days are tough days. Everybody gets tough days. Absolutely. But um, I've learned something very valuable, and it's because of my background. Mm -hmm. Number one, being the seventh child, the youngest at seven getting to observe all the relationships and reactions with my 
siblings and then also um, owning a, a business where therapy was necessary daily. That was not my major in college, but it became my major in psychology because looking at people and understanding the needs of them when you're working with children, I was working with the parents right. more than that because they had needs before they went to work. They had needs after they came back mm -hmm. and those moods changed daily depending on what their day was. So right. this is about a tough day. For me, I had to recognize and I had a set of questions that I would ask myself even before I saw them by their body language. Mm -hmm. When they come in and I would really tell my teachers and this would get on my nerves because they never understood the fact. I said, you know, you have to the read cues. the cues. You need to read the body language. You're right. picking up your child. You come in and you have this thing that you're deciding that you're going to tell them that, um, you know, little little JJ snatched somebody's head and I put them in time out today and you're boasting about it. And they're looking at you in the temper. You can see the, yeah. that I don't believe this. Right. And number one, too, I just paid you. Yeah. I just paid my child care fees. <laughs> and not only that, look, I paid my money. Right. <laughs> I'm about to kill you. And yeah. I'm mad at my husband. Uh, I had to get into it with a coworker at work. Somebody yeah. pissed me off on the street and I get here to get my child. And you have, and you're the last person. So we have to be conscientious of tough days. Yeah. That's for me and you. That's for every one of us. Tough days are tough days. Right. Okay. And so, um, Trauma dumping can come on because you know what? Sometimes we just we take we take each other for granted. You know, uh, me and my daughter had courses that we would go through when we would get into feuds on the phone, yeah. and we both would end up crying. You know, <laughs> we would end up crying. Because, I'm mad, and you mad too. <laughs> yeah, because she had a point she was trying to make, and this is the strong-willed child. I'm talking from the point of being a parent and a grandparent, and but these are also inner uh, relationships with sisters and brothers. These are relationships with families, friends, husbands, wives. They go on. The interconnection never stops. And we have to realize everybody, including our children, if they're in daycare or preschool or in high school, everybody has tough days. Yeah. Everybody. There's not one soul on this planet, including my South African friends. Social grace. Yes. I mean, giving each other grace. Yes, because we don't. You yeah. know, and we don't sometimes realize that, that when you get on, I try to be cognizant and aware when I'm on the phone and I'm calling someone, I'll ask you first, how are you today? I really want to hear how you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, everything is good. Before I start to vent, mm -hmm. I try to test the waters. It's good to wait. Yeah. Wait around the shores and see, because they may not, even though you might need to get it out, you need to find out if this is the right person, the right place. It saves At the right us. time. Yes, it say it will save you even in relationships with uh, husbands and wives and and family members. Sometimes it's just not right at the time to engage. But then again, if there's a crisis, you know, you can turn to friends. You know, and if you can't, I think sometimes I'll be honest with you, you might be able to turn to one of those 800 numbers that they tell you, you know to call what? for prevention. I don't know. I'm no, I'm saying if you have no one else to turn to, right. to be honest, I'm saying. If someone is in a crucial situation, I'm I'm just saying, I would never want someone to miss a no, conversation. For sure. for so sure. if you don't, I would say turn to someone to say, I need to get some counsel right now, or I need an answer, you know, and are you available? Or even stating that question to a person so then they can look at you with a different set of eyes. Because right. sometimes that, you know, I've done that for myself, that sometimes they'll beat me to the gun. Even my daughter, I'll call her and she might be so full. She just starts to give me her stuff first and I'm sitting back like, <laughs> Maybe I should have called somebody else. No, same. But, that you know. just happened the other day with us. You yes. called me, and right. I was like, "Okay." Yes. And she laughed about it, and she was like, "It's not me." And, like, and so, I know you're you mad, know. but it's right. not me. It's yeah, your other it's, child. It's not my other child. She look at you. She wants to say this. I was looking for my son. I hadn't talked to him in a couple of days, so <laughs> Sorry, she's, she's busting me out. <laughs> I was looking for you, son, and he had been sick, and so yeah. I was venting to her. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm still the mother. Absolutely, and a grandmother. We do it all the time. Yeah, and she was like, "Mom," she says, "It's not me." And I, <laughs> you know, and at the same time, I did get a chance to call, and I got a chance to talk to him. And but that's the point, right? That's yeah. the that's the point of that of bringing like, and I think we should be good about bringing awareness of if I'm going to take a break. She's going to keep talking to you. We have some, <laughs> we have some, some Easter deliveries baskets. and little surprises. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> So anyhow, guys, 
um, traumas. Being accountable, again, for the energy that we're bringing into a situation, realizing that one may be going through something even worse than yours or not, or just not in a space to receive what you're saying. Let's be conscious of giving our people, our loved ones, the grace that we would want someone to give us um, is really the moral of this story, but also bringing um, trauma to relationships, marriages. Yeah. What do you think about that? Oh, trauma is part of a marriage. And it's a, is you it? know, yeah. And I'm going to, let me go straight to the, <gasps> word, the word again. Our trials come to make us. They don't come to break us. No. They don't come to break us, but we do have those, those are trials. Now there's no thing that, you know, the, the world calls it trauma, but these are the things that we go through. And there's another scripture. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, yeah. but we rise above them all. Right. We are more than conquerors. We can handle it. You know, we have so many people and I'm not doing any disrespect, but back in the day when I was raised, we were raised to back be fearless. Yeah, yeah. Fearless. And you had to have courage. There was no such thing as a bully of bully protection program I was you know me and, and so we were just talking about yeah and so okay. to me trauma falls into that same line we didn't call the trauma you know we call it like you know what if they can't talk they just can't talk they get it together but you know we had to have so much more of an endurance mm -hmm. and but we didn't see and they say well you need sensitivity training I know you will probably want to um, you know comment but I'm gonna send you to the cornfield anyway. what do you think about trauma in relationships marriages long-term situations um i think trauma in relationships for us i'm gonna go biblical once again there we go you know that our trials come to make us mm -hmm. many of the afflictions of the righteous and we rise above them all i don't think trauma the new world trend of trauma and it's not so much new world that we take these words and we take them out of context to say that you know trauma we Trauma is something that we all have. Right. From the time that we're born in this world, we come in with trauma. You know, when you when you take that baby's, uh, if you're if you're not nursing or you decide to wing your baby off, that's trauma. Yeah. <laughs> that's a relationship. Like their baby's looking at you like, are you serious? No, you're my, my life force. My babies was not. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. know trauma is uh, taking your child to school for the first day. Oh, I cried. Trauma is going to the dentist. Oh, trauma is someone that. telling you. Um, that you know what you open your limits of your bank account and your uh, gas is getting coming cutting oh, off. Trauma, trauma is a, a death in the yeah. family. Trauma is around us yeah. all day long, but we don't accept it that way. So we, we, we make it bigger than what it is instead of accepting it and then making peace with that trauma. Right. That you know you're gonna have trauma is how we navigate through it. How and not carry it. Yeah, you, you know we're gonna have it. You, you not carry it, but at the same time acknowledge it and deal with it. And then, you know, let it take its course, whichever way it's going to run. We're not, we're, we really want to be in charge, but we're not. None of us, mm -hmm. as much as we say, you know, we, we have planned something and we have to do it all over again. Look at, at right. And, and, but it's the amount of trauma. Now trauma, it can be so extended, but in relationships, I think the problem in relationships is that we try to keep the trauma going on. I think because you get comfortable in that, right? Yeah, because there's you been an injury. You get comfortable. There's been an injury. Mm -hmm. it's, let's just say like childhood trauma, right? There's a, in, And I feel like childhood trauma plays a lot into your adult relationships. Absolutely. Right? And so you get comfortable with the scar that's there, mm -hmm. right? And undoing the scar hurts worse than the, than the original scar itself, right? Mm -hmm. Because you've now become comfortable with the scab that's there right and you're picking at them and you're picking at them yeah you want to nurse them and pick at them and yeah and carry that thing because it's comfortable yeah. yeah yeah even if it's uncomfortable you've learned to find comfort in that right like right. this is just me this is where this is who i am right but originally it stemmed from a trauma and, and it, that was the response it's generational even right you know i look at a lot of fears and um People, you know, when they talk and then they'll talk about um, a family member, uh, someone that has, you know, been translated to the other side mm -hmm. and they'll keep that trauma of that person alive. And they'll say that this is, you know, but they're, and they think it is just a memory, but it's not just a memory. They're keeping the trauma of what 
they went through with that person, that experience that was maybe not a good one, you know, that hurt them or whatever. It's okay to remember the hurt, but we have to find a place to put that hurt so it's not affecting our lives anymore. We That's can look at it. Yeah, we can effectively look at it, but don't judge yourself and don't gauge on your future by the trauma. Mm -hmm. So it's being able to look at that trauma and then letting it go and acknowledging that it happened. Mm -hmm. And in a relationship, it's much harder because so you're looking at a person and they're next to you every day or whatever, and they're in your life, they're in your in your home, they're in your bed. If you're married to them, yeah. and you're saying, you know, I was hurt, but you have to understand that that trauma was something that can either it can cripple you, mm -hmm. or it can make you stronger. So you have to figure out what you want to do with that trauma. Right. Okay. That's what I think. Yeah, okay, girl. I think that's it. So we're telling you guys, basically, um, how to deal with. Trauma, trauma Duffy. Yeah. And essentially, it's being, again, cognitive and conscious of what we bring to the table, the energy that we bring to any table that we sit at. Well, you want to, yeah, and to me, that means just being supportive when be a good listener. That's a hard thing. People say be a good listener until you say something that someone doesn't agree with. And that's true. You know? And I find that to be something that I deal with. You're a good listener until you're like, oh, but wait. You get pricked. Yeah, a trauma, a trigger. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, oh, I can't, especially me, I'm like, I can't let you finish that story until I go back to that point. But that's a maturing, because I was there too. That's a maturing stage. And I'm not saying I have so much arrived, because I will be just saying this, and my husband will probably walk in, and then I'll say, Duh. you know what? Yeah. But it's something that we do. We have to mature in and get comfortable, because... We learn um, some things to take terms that is not your turn. That sounds, look at you. See, see that look I got on her? You know, we, we hate to be it's rejected. It's not your turn. Sometimes it's just not your turn. And we and I, I do a lot of reflections on children because, again, doing this for 35 years, it just kind of pops out. You have to teach your child, you have to teach your inner child mm -hmm. that it's not your turn. Necessarily, if someone called you and I just burned up my fried chicken, I'm upset over it. And my husband came in the room and he said, oh, my dinner is ruined. And then you call me and you're telling me about what you're doing. And you're doing a trauma dump on me, not because, yeah. just because I'm the person you come to, but I'm really angry with him. Yeah. Now it's going to be misdirected. And, and then um, you say something that triggers me because you said, and maybe you didn't mean it, but in the midst of that, you say, mom, you, you always burn the chicken up. Right. Now, I'm, now I'm angry with you, yeah. but I have to remember it's not my turn. Yeah. And so we have to be considered, goes back to that, to be to to be more than what we can, we think we can be. Because we can. We can be considered, we can be a bigger person and say, it's not my turn. It did maybe it hurt me and offended me or whatever, but I need to let that go because right now you need to talk. You need to vent. Because sometimes we do need to vent. Yeah. You know, this world, you know, we have so much back in the day people sat out on their porches and and this is in Vegas, I'm saying, and you know, everybody had a chance to wave at the next person. Hey, how you doing? I don't even see my neighbors. You don't even see your neighbors. You don't know your neighbors. Yeah. Um, you don't know your neighbors. You don't see your neighbors. And there's no communication other than uh, you going to wherever you're going to go to your job or to go to a busy day to take care of business, pick up your kids from an educational setting, get meals set and plan, plan out the next day. That is once again why I like South Africa. Yeah, it came back. You know, no, you know what? Again, I'm going to say this. The people, and they probably don't deal with that as much. They have um, villages. Mm -hmm. They work in the cities, mm -hmm. and then they go home to uh, a lot of them. I'm not saying everyone, but there's still a thing, such thing called village life. We used to call it our communities where there was people that you knew, uh, Miss, Miss Mary stayed down the street. Mm -hmm. And so our trauma wasn't as great because you know that we could we could associate as you're walking home from school, mm -hmm. you know that Miss Betty across the street was cooking greens and you could smell the greens. You walked a little further and you would uh, wave at Mr. Ike and you could see him watering his grass. These are things that neutralize trauma because they're familiar, familiar and it's like your Good hormones point. and pheromones. The pheromones are connecting because these are things we don't look at. Neuroplasticity, things in our brains. We don't think about those things, but it's there. And we're not connecting with us. Okay. 
I mean, it was a very big because our brain is like that. It's it's yeah. it's flexible, but we don't come out of the realm of just being in that little space of our own bubble. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're just stuck. Like I need, I need the this. prisons we create. Right. Instead of that, and that construct has to be broken down, and it's by us. We need to talk. We need to share because sometimes when you're in a place and you're going through, instead of trauma dumping, you might just need to walk in the park. Mm-hmm. You might need to ground a little bit. We don't have the same familiar places that we had maybe in my day, but you might just need to take a break and go out there and look at some trees and see the birds and see how they make in a nest. Go look at some uh, nature. Look at nature to see. Uh, in Las Vegas, we got plenty of ants. <laughs> go see. <laughs> go go and see how. Oh, like, some ants. Yeah, go go outside and look at some ants and see how they are. Uh, tearing up your house and going through and making heels and taking your food. But we need to have something that's bigger than us. A disconnect, right? To show us how small we are in a a vast world. Right. So, because what I'm really getting at is that we all trauma dump at some point in time. Yeah. And sometimes you need to just take it back. We have toxic parents. Mm. Not you. You weren't toxic at all. No, but you know what, though? But I know a lot of people I've had. I don't have friends now, really. Sorry, I don't. Then no, it's not the, never really I really never had friends. I'm kind of like a loner. Uh, being the seventh child, once again, I had friends that were insulated in my family group right. already. So I really didn't have a need for that. And also, I'm kind of an introvert. Even though I talk a lot in here, yeah. I'm an introvert 100%. Yeah, you give me a good sure. book and some uh, uh, nature, some plants, I'm good. You for know. Sure. But realizing that, I realize that people don't understand that there's more bigger ways. We keep saying you don't have friends, but you don't necessarily have to have friends. You need to have peace. Mm-hmm. And get comfortable with yourself. That's the key. Yeah, you Peace. know, so that top that that toxic trauma dumping, we can cut down a lot of that because most of the times, it's never going to change. Your job situation is not known. What I mean that in the real sense of that person being whoever they are, is they are, and if they're dumping something on you, that mm-hmm. might be just their personality trait. Mm-hmm. So then, how do you adjust to right. that? To say that I'm going to be okay. How do you carry that? Yeah. How do you carry that in a marriage? How do you carry that with, like I said, with children, toxic parents, relatives, um, uh, workers, co-workers? You have to learn how to carry it but not carry that. Mm -hmm. And so maybe these things are exercises for us to do, not so much for them to do. Because they may just be happy to be that person and say, I'm going to call you. And that kind of goes back to that saying, like, about forgiveness. Like, you don't wow. forgive the person for that person. You forgive the person for yourself, mm-hmm. right, at the end of the day. Right. You do forgive the person for yourself. And that was something that I learned a long time ago, too. Yeah. You do. I always thought forgiveness was, you know, saying, I wanted to be mean. And I know I stress that I want to, you know, hold on to this. But I forgive you instantly. And I told my daughter that years ago. I said, you know what? Never get bitter get better that's it i said no oh, honey i'm always gonna get better now yeah <laughs> and she's have a problem with it like why do you always say that but she sees the yeah. beauty of it because you know what when you get bitter you don't grow for sure you don't grow for you know? sure i mean i mean it does nothing for you no you don't grow and you're holding that and everything from every relationship that i had that didn't make it yeah i would be like i'm gonna smile the next time i see you maybe like what i said you heard me i'm gonna be smiling yeah. i'm going to be able to look you in the face because i always walked away with knowing that i did everything that i needed to do absolutely and so that's the smile on my face is and the energy you exert of doing that like i'm not even gonna give you that dang on energy no don't give them the energy <laughs> no energy that's necessary but well, that's it, it. is that it is that what we go do for toxic, toxic relationships? Yeah. Toxic, 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 dumb, all that. We don't want that bad energy. Well, I want to know how you ended your date with that. I mean, so if you're the the takeaway from that is that don't spend that too much time on anything. I, I feel like that's not serving you. I'm not gonna give that much energy to toxicity. When I recognize that, you know, it's time to pivot. And it's okay to make suggestions to that person if you're not the person that's doing the trauma dumping. Don't even do suggestions. I think you you got to get comfortable with having uncomfortable conversations. And I think the quicker people figure that out, the better your life is. Because why am I going to tiptoe around something that I really want to tell you? Right. That's true. And, that's and now true. I'm still warring with myself on how to tell you. And now it's more energy. If I'm telling you that something is hurting me, right, or something is affecting me, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you clearly so you can understand that. And so next time I will be like, this is a choice that you're making. 
right? Because I've told you what my boundaries are, if I'm able to receive right now. So then now that tells me it's not just so much as dumping, right? Now you don't respect my boundaries. Yeah, but see, at the same time, that to me can be your, but that's like a personal situation because you want to want to know why? Why? Because what time? sometimes people don't even know why they're doing it. But that's why it's your job to bring that issue up when it's happening in real time. Right. Well, you want them to break the pattern. Yeah. Okay, so I get it now. The pattern has to be broken. And so instead of you kind of smoothing it over, yeah, just coaxing say, hey, it, I'm not in the, the space pattern. right now. Yeah. You know, something happened. And it doesn't have to be gotcha. in a mean way. Right. It's just saying, because how does one know? If I did something to you and you tell me weeks down the road, right? Now, I don't see... Now it might be really small to me. It mm -hmm. might because it's not in real time. I'm like, well, why did she even say that? If you say this to me in real time, if I call you and you say, "Hey, Asia, I'm not today. Is I'm not in the space to receive." I can say, "Oh, that's a mental check for me to say." Okay, I, I get that. And we've done and, that. And we've done that, right? And it's that effective it because effective. you're making me come to in that moment, right. right? Now I'm not thinking about myself, right? Right? Because we move thinking about ourselves right so now you made me conscious of that mm -hmm. and now i can adjust so mm -hmm. i'm saying to have those uncomfortable conversations in real time right? right and then you're not harboring resentment when it doesn't need to be that so our answer to trauma dumping is agree to disagree agree to disagree fight live to fight another day wow that's a heavy <laughs> takeaway i like that <laughs> hey be sure to like and subscribe and make comments Make For sure, sure. Yes, make sure you keep coming back. Make comments. We want to hear you know, your thoughts on the, opinion, you know, on opinions. what we said and yes. opinions. And um, we're always going to be talking about something that's going to be helpful, uh, hopefully in our lives and in your lives. And we're going to keep it moving. We always going to talk about what's going on in our lives, and you can take whatever you want from yeah. that, you know. Or yeah, or either I like uh, this one um, YouTuber that I follow. Mm -hmm. Go Black to Africa out. And here I am. Peace out. He always says, go black to Africa. He says, either I'm going to drop a nugget. He said, you can use it or either toss it away. So I'm going to use what he says today. You can use it or toss it away. But either way, it's yours. Yeah. yeah. Give me some dap. I say that. Guys. I know it. I love it. Come on. Help me. Dap. The next time. <laughs> I'm still doing the one finger. <laughs>